So hello and good afternoon. This is Ruth Pozzuolo from Coroval.com and today is time again for another Tax Fridays. This time we're going to talk about statistics, kind of. Here's the thing, I'm going to show you how you can bin your data to be able to categorize it into groups. I'm going to show you two ways. One, you can do it with some buttons from the user interface. The other one is how you would do it if you want to do it manually. We're going to talk about how to create, how to calculate frequency of a data set and relative frequency also. And then we will talk about the results and how to interpret those. This is the first part of a series of videos talking about statistics. So I'll tell you more about it at the end. I don't want to make this too long. So how about we get started? Okay, so what is binning? Binning is basically a fancy word for categorizing things. So you're putting things into buckets to make sense of them easier, okay? And you have two ways to do it. Number one, you pick the column that you want to do the binning on, you click on new group and you let Power BI do the job for you. So um, he's recommended you to have a bean size of three point something. You can change it to a whole number. And then it will create the interval for you. Let me change it to a table so you can see it. Okay. Works beautifully. Now, what we are going to do here, I'm going to show you how to do it manually in case you have a specific formula you'd like to use and you would like to, you know, do it by hand. And also I would like you to how to create like fancy labels when you're using numbers. And then we will do the frequency calculation and the relative frequency calculation and look at the data and see what we can find, what information is given us. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to create a column and we're going to calculate how many beans we want. Okay. So, this is a formula that I use very, very often. There are others. I'm not saying that it's the best. It just works best for me and it's like super easy to remember. Uh, so it's count rows of our data set, rainfall. And then how about we do the shift under? So, so you can actually see better. So we have the count rows and then we are going to subtract one and subtract one to the square root. So this is basically the square root of the number of rows minus one and then minus one. Okay. And this is telling us that the number of beans that we should have is around 10, 10, 11, okay, 10.8. Good. Now we're going to calculate how big the beans should be. So we go to a new column and we say bean sizes, shift enter. And we're going to use variables for these. We're going to use a variable that calculates the maximum value of our data set. I cannot use the word max because it's reserved. So I will use max s and then I put max and then we have to put the column name, right? Rain inches. And because it is a column, let's put the column name and then shift enter bar no, new variable we're going to calculate the minimum and it's the same i cannot use mean as name it is probably reserved so i am going to use uh, means and this is the table name and this is the column okay now what else return now that i have the max and the mean of the data set shift enter I am going to round up. So ceiling rounds up my data. I have a video on that. Shift enter. I'm going to divide. Shift enter. The max minus the mean by the number of beans.
Okay. And I want to round it by one. Also, oh, round up. Okay, so now I have the number of bean sizes. And now what we're going to do is assign a bean number to each row. So depending on the value that it has, it should be on bean one, two, three, four, five. So we do that with a new column. And this is bean number. Shift enter. We're going to round it down. Uh, we're going to shift enter divide every time you're going to divide something use divide okay because then you will not have problems with uh, divided by zero and all that kind of stuff so we're going to divide the rain inch column by the bean size we are going to I should probably do shift enter. We're going to floor it and then we are going to add one. Boom. And now we're going to sort it ascending. And as you can see, because the, the bean sizes is one to four, the first one. So this is the max bean size for. So then this that is 3.21 falls into the one. So this being one. Then the next bean is four to eight. That's where we have it. And all the values that fall between four and eight will get bean number two, bean number three, bean number four, five. Mm -mm. So we could use these as a label, but I think it's not very intuitive. It's better to have bean names new column bean names shift enter ceiling to round up shift enter rainfall inch bean number minus one so it's a bean number minus one times the bean size, shift enter. So this is the first part, okay? And then we're going to concatenate these. Concatenate, and then we're going to create the second part, which is round down, and then is the bean number times I should probably do like that shift enter uh, bean sizes and then shift enter and we close the floor and now we have a column with the bean names and now everything starts to make sense right so it's zero to four is the bean number one four to eight eight to twelve and so on and so forth works beautifully now because this is text we need to sort it by the bin number this one here okay so now we can come in here and all these let's see these we don't need anymore these we don't need anymore so now you cannot put the rain in there to make a histogram because that what it's going to do is going to sum it, right? If we go here, it's sum, and that's not what we want. You could do a count in here, and then you will do it. But if you want to know how to do it in DAX, I'll show you. So frequency is equal to calculate. <coughs> the count of the rain what is it inches all except rainfall and then all except the bean names so it's saying count the number of times that 
you know, this happens for each bean size. I'm just explaining myself poorly, sorry. But we've gone through this formula before. And as you can see, it's given us exactly the same results. Just in case that you want to have it portable, the frequency, you'll see it. And now you create the histogram. And suddenly, a pattern appears. Data labels on. And let's look at the data and what it says later. What we are going to do now is calculate the relative frequency. And to do that, what you do is you divide each row by the total to see how often that number appears in the data set. To do that, the first thing we need to do is to have the denominator 141 on each row. So we go here, relative frequency. And that's what we're going to do first. We're going to do calculate frequency. And then for all For the entire table, let's go and see what that does. You can see it's ignoring the filters here and it's taking the entire table. So it's giving us 141 for each row, which is exactly what we want. And this is the denominator of our formula. So what we need to do now is shift enter, divide, shift enter, frequency is in the numerator is it called like that it sounds like terminator okay so here we have frequency divided by you know 141 and then it's going to give us zero because we want to have percentages and no decimals that's absolutely gorgeous good okay frequency and now we have the same charts but we have with relative frequencies instead of actual total values. Okay, so we have one column and one column only, and we know now a lot of things. This is number of years. So if we put rain here and then we put the count, this is for 141 years rain in LA, I think. And one of the things that we can uh, understand looking at this chart is that periods with l little rain are very rare. Only 1% of the time, so the, these 141 years, in this case one year, we had inlay very, very little rain. We can also see that extreme rain is also quite... Um, Uncommon. You can see 1% between 36 and 40 inches, 2%, 1%. So the normal um, rainfall for LA, it goes here, we have 26% between 8 and 12. So this is 26, 24, this is like 60% of the time, it will be between 4 inches and 16 inches, okay? Or we could say that the normal is between 4 and 20. So this is quite amazing, right? Consider that we just have one column of data and then, of course, some metadata. This is city and this is lay. But still, we have now a lot of information about weather conditions when it comes to rain, just for one column of data. So we know that extreme dry conditions are very rare and we also know that extreme wet conditions are very rare too okay so most of the time the rain like 60 this was like this is 60 percent and this is 80 percent so 80 percent of the time the rain falls between four inches to 20. Okay, and we will talk about this in future videos, but as you can see, the data set is a little bit skewed, so it has a tail here from the wet 
side in this case. Okay, if it was normally distributed the data, it would be symmetrical. Okay, so the tail here will be as long as the tail there. But we will talk about that in another video, okay? I think this is uh, enough for today. Okay, so that was part one of a series of videos I want to do about statistics. Um, I saw on this business application summit that Microsoft team were going to release a profiler for the data where you can get, uh, you know, the mean, the median, you can get the range, the mode, the max, the mean, and the standard deviation and all that stuff. And I thought it would be fantastic if you already have an idea of what those things are and what to use it for. So today was the first video. On the next Tax Fridays, we'll talk about the mean and the, uh, the median and the average, which uh, is quite interesting. And, and really, really, really important video if you are working with averages, okay? Um, and then we will talk, I will talk about standard deviation and the normal distributed data. Uh, after that, we'll see how those videos do and if they're doing well, I can continue and going deeper into the statistic holes. But again, the idea is just not to show you how to use the DAX formula only, but to show you how to interpret and how to use all those useful metrics that you can get for your data. So this is part one and uh, more to come. Let me know what you think about the idea and uh, I'll see you again on Monday as usual. Have a great weekend. Bye.